a set of boards out of a 3D printer. These were sent to me some time ago by Bjorn, who said, Here's the faulty 3D printer board I promised to send you. It is a control board for an Anet A8 3D printer. After I changed the potentiometer, there's a little potentiometer there. After I changed the potentiometer to increase torque of the motors, the board refused to turn on properly. Tech support told me a little light should blink, but even that doesn't happen. Um, basically speaking, what happened is the board failed and he got just, because it was easiest for them to do this, they just sent a complete set. They did the parts kind of thing. It's just easier for companies to do. So let's investigate what's happened. If I just turn this power on here now, watch the display and the lights. If I turn it on, a brief blink from here, nothing. It's sinking an amp. The voltage has dropped to 4.33 volts. I'm going to leave it for a second because that means something is heating up on the board. Right, tell you what, let's, uh, let's get the thermal imaging camera into it. Let's get the thermal imager in. Just let me boot this up. Booting up my thermal imaging phone. Because I'm very close to it, I can actually see a hotspot right away. Oh, I can see, hold on. I can see the voltage regulator is hot. What is that over there that's hot? Finger in front of it, oh, that is hot. It's one of the stepper motor drivers. Rightio, let's investigate. I'll turn the power off now. This stepper motor driver has failed. Now, this circuit board, uh, I'll show you a picture of the circuit board. It's easier to point at because it's ultimately bigger. So I'll put this down here. I'll just zoom down onto that. We have the five stepper motor outputs. We've got the X motor, Y motor, two Z or Z motors, and an E motor for the extruder. This is the one that's failed, and it's right next to the potentiometer. I wonder if, while adjusting this tiny potentiometer, a screwdriver slipped and it's bridged onto these capacitors. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to bring the circuit board in here. I want to desolder this and see if it clears the fault, but... It's got that little heat sink glued onto the top, which is going to make it quite hard to desolder. I wonder if I can do this without uh, damaging the circuit board. Can I? I don't think I can get anything flat underneath to try and cut through that. Is the silicon going to let me slide the heat sink off? Yes, it is. By pushing down, sliding that, that's giving access to the chip. Right, I should have thought about this in advance. I could have got, had the soldering iron on, but I'm going to pick the silicon off this chip as much as possible. I'm going to get the soldering iron on and I'm going to uh, try and heat this up the hot air gun um, and get some flux under it to try and melt it and we'll see if we can get that off. One moment, please. Okay, I think I'm ready to have a go at desoldering this. The chip is a 4988ET, which is a fairly standard, well, it's a variant on a standard stepper motor driver. I'm going to start by putting some flux around this. I'm going to just spoosh it all over the top of it. I'm going to make a big puddle around there. It always helps flux. It kind of softens the solder. It kind of, like, mates on and just gets the heat in for some reason. It just helps. I've got a heat gun. I'm going to start heating this up, and it'll take a bit of patience. I don't have much patience. Maybe I should have used, and uh, maybe I should have used a gel flux as opposed to that. Right, I'll just have patience. I'll point at this and I'll just try and blow all the other components off the circuit board, as sometimes happens. I shall undulate around and round and see if it's, no, is it going to move? Is it moving? It doesn't help that there is silicon in the vicinity of it. I can see the solder light getting a bit shinier. This is good, this is good. Oh, it's off. Rightio, let's uh, clean that up. With the soldering iron and some desoldering braid, I'm trying to find my desoldering braid, here it is. So I shall put some fresh solder in that. Looking for my fresh solder, here it is. So I'll just basically get it all over those pads. This kind of helps clean things up a bit. Uh, and I'll use plenty of flux. Let's get loads of flux in this. Let's make a huge mess. Oh, look at it all bubbling away. Nice. And 
and I shall just scrub this gently around without removing all the pads off the circuit board, all the tracks. And that will hopefully mop that up. Right, tell you what, that looks pretty clean. Uh, now I'm going to power up and we'll see if the system starts. One moment, please. Right, let's test it. The chip, incidentally, is a 4988ET. The closest I could find to that was the Allegro A4988, which is a very smart little chip. It's a minimum sort of pin count for the microcontroller uh, stepper driver, which does things like it's got a little capacitor there, a charge pump that it steps a voltage up inside for solid driving the MOSFETs inside. And it allows micro stepping of the motor, but it takes all the, the sort of the hassle away from the microcontroller. The microcontroller, all it has to do is say, go in this direction, go a number of steps. That is it. Very neat little chip. Uh, available if you buy them in bulk for about 10. Well, it, you can either buy one for 10 pounds or you can buy 10 for 10 pounds. It's one of those things. Very neat. Right, tell you what, let's uh, hook this up. And what all I'm really looking for here is for it to boot up. If it boots up, we know we've got the power rail back. So I shall plug the display on and I shall power it up now. It's booting Anet or Anet 3D printer. Welcome to Anet printer ready. One thing it doesn't do then, it doesn't check that the chips are actually there. It doesn't do a, a self test, but that's fine. A little reset button. Let's press it. Oh, it does reset it. That's nice. Uh, so, well, I don't have an Anet printer, but if I did, it's the, first, I'd, the next step would be to buy one of those chips and replace it. Put the little heat sink on with silicon compound, the, the uh, silicon adhesive, and then I try it. Worst case scenario, the data lines may have been affected. If the voltage had been bridged onto the data lines, it could have knocked them out. Um, so it's worth mentioning these little tiny trimmer potentiometers, if you ever do a lot of adjusting off them, well, even if you have one piece of equipment that needs them adjusted, you can get trimmer tools with plastic tips. And the advantage of the plastic tip is you can't short stuff out. Also, they're pretty common because they used to be used for tuning coils and ductors uh, and variable capacitors because the non-metal nature meant they didn't interfere with them. But there we go. I would say that at this point in time, we know where we are. And uh, the next step would be to actually get the chip and put it in and then find a suitable test subject, even just sticking a motor in there would probably work, and just see what happens. But there we go. That's as far as I can go at the moment. I'm happy that I've proven that that is the faulty component.